Thank you very much. So my name is Balint Balázs and I'm from Hungary. I belong to a small research group called Environmental Social Science Research Group, ESSRG, and we are based in the Szent István University, which is um, in Gödöllő, 30 kilometers of uh, the capital. Budapest and I um, was invited here to share some experiences from Central Europe, um, and especially with a focus on Hungary. So I will do that. Um, I took part in, in this team who, who was um, contributing to the um, Moya study. And as um, in this study, and also in my life, um, empirical evidence on, on this sector is mostly coming from um, public funding and uh, European sources. Um, recently I took part in, in two of those. Uh, some of you may be well aware of uh, one of them was looking at uh, the Converge project was looking at how communities contribute to and how policies integrate global equity and ecological sustainability and we've been doing some policy analysis on uh, food issues but also on um, uh, some uh, food system mappings in, in um, different communities. The other one was um, the FAN project, also an FP7 project, which looked at stakeholder perspectives on, re on the research needs and how um, policies and and, and these stakeholder strategies can strengthen um, the short food supply chains and the food sector. So uh, my main um, message here that there might be a, a special Central European context for this whole uh, issue and if, you, if, I, if I just want to make a very broad social scientific um, understanding of this um, Central European context then I can find immediately uh, three ideas that, uh, that I find useful. There is a strong tradition in social sciences that acknowledge the uniqueness of this region, Central Europe, and, um, and this tends to focus on the practical problem solving. Um, and there is also a, a, a track in the literature that says um, universities and, and regional centers became a home for new co collaborations with local stakeholders and uh, especially uni around universities there are new multi and interdisciplinary programs um, more and more also transdisciplinary um, and with what it implies that there are also new methods that are used such as for example problem-based learning or action learning in in these contexts um, to look into uh, the policy context, and especially uh, for uh, for the Hungarian uh, st uh, state of the play. Now we have a what we call a so-called constitution of rural Hungary. Basically, it is an agriculture and rural development strategy that um, that is uh, a foresight type of document, looking at uh, how agriculture uh, should be developed until uh, 2020, and it really opens up some new opportunities, new windows for, of opportunity for, for the bottom-up initiatives. Um, so in this sense, um, as uh, Damien uh, was showing, um, there are clearly uh, windows of opportunity at the, at the moment. And especially in the, in the last um, f three or four years, um, policies in Hungary turned for support of this sector. There are new and new exemptions for uh, small-scale farming and flexibility rules implemented and very successfully. Uh, three years ago there was a new decree on small-scale production and trading and recently the law on, uh, uh, on public procurement and also on food procurement was changed two times. Um, some of these changes are, um, are driven by the EU policy, but, but not much. Also, um, m most of the impetus behind them is coming from the local food uh, movement in, in Hungary. But definitely there is an, an also a, um, an acknowledgement of uh, the EU policy drives. Um, when we are looking at... Um, <coughs> Uh, short food supply chains, I think it's, it's very important to, to do it in a way as it was mentioned already and especially highlighted by Branka that it's not just the producer and consumer uh, benefits or uh, so it's not these two that should be imbalanced. There are other constituencies 
uh, within these local food networks. Uh, so as the first uh, step, I think it's important to make a, at least a rudimentary uh, stakeholder mapping in, in such uh, circumstances to also to develop uh, policies. Uh, there are a range of um, um, constituencies that can benefit uh, from, from this sector. And also I find um, very fruitful what, what we call uh, within our group the, the Wageningen tri Triangle, which is telling you uh, about the market, the civil society and, and the state and how um, uh, this new uh, food governance uh, is, is shaped recently. Um, and I think um, short food supply change, uh, chains are uh, representing only, as this, um, as this suggests, uh, only, only one, one side of, uh, of the whole picture. But we should uh, also uh, broaden the understanding around, uh, around this uh, um, issue. Uh, as, as turning now more to Hungary and also to the supply and, and, and demand, um, a recent um, survey on, on the market, so the supply uh, side, is showing that um, there are only a few uh, factors that are really important uh, for, for, the, for the producers in, in, in these short food supply chains, increasing the profitability, increasing the direct relations and and the trust-based atmosphere uh, with the consumers and decreasing the defenselessness towards the wholesale sector and to regain some more autonomy. Uh, all, all the other issues are, are not really important uh, for, for farmers. And, um, and actually we found that uh, uh, there are also hindering factors. So for example, the short food supply chains, as farmers perceive it, they uh, completely can delineate the demand in terms of geography and, and social sense. And they also uh, sharpen in competition, which they already um, perceive when uh, they try to enter uh, this local food market. And obviously they uh, still cannot do with anything with this um, post-communist heritage of, um, of distrust and lack of cooperation and, uh, and all this. Meanwhile, on the other side, uh, consumers decide a lot uh, how, um, how their money is spent. And, and, um, and obviously, as this uh, small picture suggests, uh, uh, especially in a Hungarian context, um, a lot of money is spent on food. Um, I would say at least on average, one third of, of um, the average income is spent on food. And if you look at the annual consumption data from Hungary, it's a very high number, even in, in euros, that is spent on food. And it's uh, completely understandable that uh, <clears throat> at least uh, a much bigger portion uh, should be uh, spent in, inside, so for, for the local products. And um, the most important uh, drivers behind these sectors currently are a network of civic food networks. I identified several of those in Hungary, and, and my research is concerning uh, um, a deeper analysis of a few of them. And within this uh, study, I especially developed one uh, case study, which is a, a case from Sexar, a wine region in Hungary um, that um, that managed to establish um, uh, a quality uh, local food um, uh, network. This is typically the, the one type of initiative that is uh, initiated by, by non-farmers, so uh, a neo-traditional, <laughs> although we don't like the term, but uh, still. Um, the, the meaning behind it is to promote and also enact uh, the sustainable food supply uh, um, I, I started this research um, uh, two, two or three years ago within the local uh, food communities, and then um, within this uh, uh, segment for, for the study, I used, uh, I re reused some of the data and also uh, added some mixed methods to, to complete them. So there were key informant interviews and, 
discussions with uh, stakeholders and, and also surveys. Um, so this target area is um, the southern part of uh, the Transdanubian Hungary, um, close to the Danube, with a population of, of um, um, 37,000 uh, people. This is the smallest county, by the way, um, in, in Hungary, with severe socio-demographic decline, especially young people are um, going away. Um, it has a this peri-urban, the city region, I would say, has a very extensive uh, outskirts. The landscape is very interesting. It is full of uh, vineyards, a cascade of vineyards, as we used to say. Um, the whole area, as you can see from, from this map, um, is at the crossroad of the Transdanubian hills and the Great Plains, um, with very well-preserved food traditions and food culture. But, on the other hand, um, with a uh, heritage of uh, socialist uh, industrialization of the agriculture and very rapid urbanization of, of the area. And what we find is a lack of institutionalized cooperation between the local establishment and, and the businesses and, and, the, and the small enterprises. So we've been analyzing in this study the trajectory of, um, of this uh, new food network um, who managed to build up a database of um, 220 local producers, all from the county, so within, uh, really from the very close regions. They also did um, a portrait of uh, uh, 50 of them, um, a product catalog certification scheme, also to attract um, more distant consumers, many other uh, campaigns and web shop and so on. So the consumer survey, the main findings, um, at least one third of the consumers say that they eat local food only. The motivations are very mixed and of course the definition of the local is, is quite unclear. Many believe that it is local is something that you can easily buy in, in the neighborhood. It's not so uh, definitive at all. Um, especially the rural households who prefer to buy in local shops and um, they are also very uh, self, uh, nice self-provisioning uh, strategies uh, which were recently conceptualized in a paper as a silent sustainability uh, strategies. Families with children are the main uh, target groups uh, for, uh, for uh, farmers market and um, organic products is also an, an issue. Um, one fourth of the buyers really buy only or mostly organic products. Environmental benefits, as you can expect, are not that important or not explicitly mentioned at all. Uh, so the size of, of this, uh, let's say, market is, is, is circa uh, 100,000 people plus the, uh, the tourism. In terms of reconnection, there are obviously problems. I would like to illustrate it with one quote. Uh, from, uh, from the director of this enterprise. It is tough here with some growers or winemakers. We need to explain them that we do not need the leftover from the local market to the shop. Regularly, I have to remind them of the values of our locality that they keep forget when they are negotiating with player in the con co conventional agri-food systems. We try to challenge the well-established relationship and attempt to send a signal for how they can support their locality. Um, so I would like to um, go to the specificities of um, uh, and the challenges and draw some conclusions. So there is a new generation of civic-led uh, local food systems. Uh, I would say the, the most important characteristic is that they are all uh, community-based, which can be a, probably a, a different term for probably for neo-traditional. I don't know, but it's mostly used in the American context community based. Complex local food agendas, uh, this is what they are developed uh, clearly in urban or peri-urban settings. Um, they rely on extended collaborative networks of various, uh, very different stakeholders, producers and consumers and more. Um, they try to organize their work through collective efforts by reaction to different things, primarily unfair uh, trade 
and unsustainable practices within the food system. They try to build on the uh, personal and trust-based relations. And, and they also develop an intermediary role, which I would like to uh, tell a bit more about. Some of the lessons are <laughs> from this study are very paradoxical. Um, obviously, the notion of alternative is completely rejected in these circles. They have a very positive and, I would say, um, um, mainstream type of socio-political vision, mainstream aspirations, but the alternative values are, uh, are fully there uh, throughout the whole um, food chain. But I would say that the viability is, is, uh, is, is not the most important thing for them. And cultural value is, is more uh, uh, desirable in these initiatives. They rely on uh, a local pro promotion. Or a local promotion means that they, um, doing, they are doing uh, event-based um, um, activities, festivals, talk dinners, campaigns that always emphasize uh, different benefits around the local. And they heavily rely on uh, this uh, vocabulary of the local. So they speak about local heritage, product, community, local knowledge, without any oppositional or critical meaning. Um, they try to celebrate and diffuse this traditional knowledge, but it also means that they uh, somehow reorganize this um, local heritage to better satisfy uh, the market, the consumer uh, demand. So there is a tendency for commodification as well. Other uh, paradoxes. So the role of intermediaries is, is very um, much highlighted, I think, in these cases. Uh, there are several obstacles that really call for um, intermedi intermediaries to intervene. <laughs> for example, how to collaborate with uh, uh, a local community, with lots of say, stakeholders. Um, farmers cannot do it. Uh, consumers cannot do it, so who will do it? Uh, uh, they develop professional skills to handling also regulations and obtain uh, grants. Um, they try to act as interfaces between uh, consumers and producers, use alternative marketing methods, and typically these are not uh, farmers, but um, entrepreneurs, but, but urban intellectuals who are behind uh, the, such initiatives. Reconnection was already mentioned, and the post-socialist context was also already mentioned. Uh, I would like to also point to, uh, in. In, for this audience, a critical role of how re, what researchers can do um, in, in such um, a situation, how their role um, can be um, rethink, re resought. Um, so first of all, we see, I think, all over Europe there is a huge variability, but only very systemic, uh, very few systemic review of this issue. Uh, so we need to rely on. We need to find ways to, to produce more quantifiable evidence, I would say. Um, much, much more uh, science somehow should be uh, part, part, of, part of this story. Um, also, researchers have critical role more and more, I think, to facilitate a translation process, uh, a knowledge sharing between various actors, from producers and policy makers and importers, manufacturers, retailers. They can, they have a special role also to identify and and um, and point to intermediaries uh, who who can define the standards, uh, criteria, uh, labels of um, of, um, of of the sector, and they can by this they can combine and integrate uh, various knowledge forms not only relying on the expert scientific knowledge, but also bringing in and fruitfully collaborate with local lay knowledge. And, and also facilitate bids and, and policy support, community support for, for, um, for such um, initiatives. Um, explore consumers' willingness and the role of food champions. So more and more to create new type of knowledges um, and there is already a generalizable toolbox methodology is available, as you can see also in the brochures of, uh, of, uh, of the program that was distributed here. Thank you very much. That was all. Thanks,